g g g g g g ghost the show A polar bear walks into a bar and says, I'll have a gin and tonic, please. And the bartender says, okay, but why the big pause? And the bartender and the polar bear says, I don't know, I've always had them. It's not very good. Insects are really very fascinating creatures. They've got firmly laid out social hierarchies. Some of them have monarchies. They know about teamwork. They have some of the coolest biological features out there. And recently we've even seen that they can make amazing art. I'm pretty sure that if they wanted to, they could band together and overthrow humanity, or even all of Mammalia, with ease. Today's game is Shadowbug, a minimalistic platform-based adventure where you guide a tiny ninja-like insect on their quest to bring down the scourge of human industrialization and end its threat to your habitat. Released for Steam on the 21st of July, and previously existing on iOS and Android, Shadowbug comes to us from Moro Studios, who have worked hard to bring a fun, yet pleasantly simplistic experience to our fingertips. The narrative of Shadowbug is not particularly heavy-handed, with the story being told through loading screens, background art, and a brief blurb on the game's website, although honestly, your motivation is clear enough based on gameplay without you needing to do any additional research. The sanctity of the forest that Shadowbug once called home has been broken by the arrival of a malevolent factory. Their once very forest friends have been transformed into evil, blighted beings, and only one ninja insect can stop them. And you are that overpowered ninja insect. One of the things I like about Shadowbug is the simplicity of play, an artifact from its mobile game beginnings. To achieve your goal of a counter-industrial revolution, you only need two keyboard buttons and your mouse, or if that doesn't work for you, controllers are supported as well, which is really useful for people who can't play in a two-handed setup. Of course, no game experience is going to be perfect for everyone, and Shadowbug is no exception. There's a level of required reaction time that, in some cases, borders on intuition, which is a common element in precision platformers. And although what you're faced with here isn't nearly as punishing as those, if you have issues with fast mouse movement or split-second timing, you may wish to look elsewhere. And that's okay, this just is an experience that you will get the most out of. With that in mind, it's the speed at which you're expected to play Shadowbug that is at the core of its appeal. You see, your little ninja bug friend can't jump. You can move side to side, sure, but it's only when springing into battle that you begin to get anywhere, meaning that you have to chain together perfectly timed attacks in order to navigate the treacherous landscape the forest has become. To further emphasize the urgency of your mission and just how efficient you are with your little sword, there are leaderboards for comparing your speedrun efforts to those around the world. There are a lot of things about Shadowbug that make me happy. The artwork, especially the backgrounds, is wonderfully drawn, and the silhouetted foreground drives home the narrative experience of the lush forest being corrupted by the forces of pollution and industry. Coupled with character designs that evoke nostalgia for gothic children's films, the aesthetic is simple but effective. The fact that this is a port of a mobile game also goes a long way to providing lasting appeal to those of us with ADHD, as the fast-paced style of play that is encouraged rewards the way our brains make impulsive decisions. Add in the time trials and hidden objects in each level, and the legitimate challenge of some of the stages, and it's easy to see why I consider Shadowbug a charming game worth the $5 price tag. So I'm here in IKEA with Kale filming a club video. <laughs> oh my god. Hello. Hello, it's me and Sam and we are just doing a very special eating food episode because Kale, who's nice, bought me chocolate um, from Daiso. This is the chocolate, show him the chocolate. Thank you. These are, get out of my face. Get out of my face. These are chocolate tree stumps. 
Um, that's literally what they're called. But they're woodsman tree stumps and they look like this. I can't zoom in because we're just doing it. Stop it! Because <laughs> we're just doing this on the phone. Of uh, course, it's a short one. Show them again. Yeah, that's it. You like that, don't you? Okay, now we're going to eat them or we're going to smell them. Smell it. Now let me smell it. Now let the person holding the camera smell it so they can describe it. Okay, cool. Now we've all smelt it. I can describe it because that's how this works. What? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> it smells like chocolate and that's really all. Then now we're going to eat them. Now, now for me. I'm going to uh, eat this off camera because I'm camera shy. Now, Ignore the other eating noises. <laughs> These are pretty good. Right? Yeah. Yeah. These are they chocolate. They're chocolate. Do they're 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 crackers. Crackers. Biscuits. Your crackers. Soft biscuits. Soft biscuits. Yeah. Crunchy soft biscuits. They're good. You should eat them. They're a tasty snack. Bye now. <laughs> Bye now. Bye now. Bye for now. Yes, Kale. Hey, Tiger, I need you to go away and stay gone. Sorry. How dare you! I've never been so insulted. This trip to IKEA has been. Hey, so like in a poll asking people what color they thought salt and vinegar tasted like, um, most people said pink. Which I think is because in Australia, like, um, it's mostly on the pink packaging. But if we ran the poll in another country, I bet it would be different. Because a whole bunch of US people said, like, blue and stuff. So, yeah, that was really cool to know. Bye. Look, this episode's called Ghost, and instead of singing Mystery Skull's song, because that's what I plan to do, but I can't actually sing, I'm going to do this instead. Bricks, they fall down, then you spin them around, then you put them into lines, Tetris. If you bake lots of bricks, then they'll all disappear, and that is the game Tetris. That's all. I'm sorry. That was really bad. These credits are terrible. I gotta stop living like this.